The question we have to ask is the role that artists play in this permanent state of emergency. Questioning everything around you, uh, this is what I try to do in my work. It's very also interesting to, uh, to see how the art uh, and how the contemporary artists are reflecting on that mm -hmm. and how they participate in that. Η στέγη γραμμάτων και τεχνών μετατρέπεται σε μια ανοιχτή πλατφόρμα συζητήσεων, συναντήσεων, στοχασμού γύρω από θέματα που αφορούν όλους, ακόμη και σήμερα στην Ελλάδα, ιδιαίτερα σήμερα στην Ελλάδα, όπως η κρίση των δημοκρατικών θεσμών, όπως το δικαίωμα στην ελευθερία της έκφρασης, όπως ο ρόλος των μέσων κοινωνικής δικτύωσης στην οργάνωση και την εξέλιξη κινημάτων αντίστασης και θεωρούμε ότι είναι ιδιαίτερα σημαντικό το γεγονός ότι έχουμε μαζί μας τον Οκουι Ένβιζορ, ο οποίος έθεσε ως θέμα αυτής της διοργάνωσης την σύγχρονη κοινωνία των πολιτών. Στην στέγη γραμμάτων και τεχνών έχουμε έρθει για να συναντήσουμε τον κύριο Κουι Ενίζο, έναν σπουδαίο άνθρωπο τη τέχνη, τη θεωρία τη τέχνη, τη κριτική τη τέχνη, του φιλοσοφικού λόγου στην Ευρώπη και στην Αμερική. Έναν Νιγηριανή καταγωγή διανοούμενο, με τον οποίο θα συζητήσουμε σήμερα, επαφορμή ενό πενθήμερου που έτρεξε εδώ στη στέγη γραμμάτων και τεχνών, γύρω από το θέμα τη Αραβική Άνοιξη και με τίτλο Meeting Point Six. Ένα γεγονό που μα έρχεται από το Βερολίνο και που έχει ήδη παραστεί ε, σε, και παρουσιαστεί σε πόλει ε, τη Μέση Ανατολή. Και ξεκινάμε αμέσω να μιλήσουμε με αυτό το τόσο σημαντικό σημερινό μα ε, συνομιλητή. Well, Mr. Envisor, uh, welcome in Athens, of course. It's the first thing we want to tell you. We are very happy to have you here because you are a person who dedicates, in a way, the things of our decade in contemporary art in a very specific and special way. Let's start with this and your thoughts about the artist as a producer in times of crisis, which is an article, an article of yours yes. that I've read. Well, thank you so much. It's um, really a great pleasure to be in Athens and um, a privilege, if you will, uh, to be at uh, the Onassis uh, Cultural Center uh, in the context of meeting point six. Um, you know, to begin, I think it's important to sort of to look at the way in which uh, a number of events have conspired to make meeting point six and the topic of, you know, civic practices uh, very resonant in terms of what is going on today. Uh, so in relation to the question that you pose uh, with regards to the art, artist as producer in times of crisis, uh, this specific uh, essay began, of course, with a recollection of Walter Benjamin's um, you know, work, you know, beginning with this is on the philosophy of history, in which he said that the state of emergency in which we live today is not an exception, but the rule. And so the question we have to ask is the role that artists play in this permanent state of emergency. Call it crisis, call it austerity, call it economic uh, recession, whatever you call it. I think that meeting point six was designed specifically to pose the question of what the response of the artists uh, could be on other cultural producers in the context of changing conditions of production in their localities or around the world, as it were. However, Meeting Point 6 was designed specifically in response to what I perceived when I started my research in 2009 to be the articulation of the investment of the artists in critical cultural practices in the Arab world mm -hmm. and how the role of the artists and the work of the artists um, has been absolutely important in helping us um, you know, see and helping make visible uh, the fault lines mm -hmm. that exist between the arts and the state of, you know, space of reception, which is the public. Mm -hmm. And so this is precisely what Meeting Point 6 is about. Thank you. 
Talking about uh, our society, which is in transition, not only in the Arabic world, but all over the world. I mean, we are a society in transition, and we, uh, we experience that in our countries, in our towns, in different ways. Mm. But let's start and talk with the Arab Spring, which comes through blood and violence. Mm. So, how can an artist or the, the artistic world um, take uh, some results from this situation and create uh, a new idea, maybe, about expression in arts? First and foremost, um, I think it's important to take on board the view that the artist does not merely respond to events, uh, but the artist is also a catalyst for thinking about the possibility of how events unfold. And with the specific context of the Arab Spring, I think what on the one hand, there is the political will of the people, of the masses, uh, of the civic body, as it were, to enlarge the horizon of the possible. And that horizon of the possible is the space of subjectivity, the space of ex expression, the space of subjectivization, that is, the space of becoming a citizen. That is one thing. But on the other hand, I think it's important to sort of to look at the role that you know, the art plays, which is the possibility of enlarging the civic imagination. And this, for me, is something that is absolutely crucial in the context of the Arab Spring. But not only just simply the Arab Spring, but also in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So the articulation of this dimension of the civic imagination owes, in my view, to the way that art catalyzes the possibility of developing a new cognitive atlas, a new cognitive map into which we can project our desires, our vision of the world, and our you know, vision of reality. And this is what is ongoing at this particular time in the, in the Arab world. And if you see in meeting point six, the way that artists and writers and choreographers have developed their work, not only just in response to what has happened, but what had been happening. Fadel Jaibi's you know, piece, Amnesia, I first saw in Tunis in May 2010. So it could have been written right after Ben Ali fell, but it was written way before Ben Ali left Which was prophetic. Power. Precisely, it was not only prophetic, but it was also, in a sense, you know, it was part of that enlargening of the civic imagination. Mm -hmm. That is to say, preparing people for that which is to come, and which you call prophetic. Mm -hmm. And I think that the art is not merely mm -hmm. a space of response, but a space of proposals, a space that generates new common spaces for action, for empathy, if you will, and for solidarity. Mm -hmm. Le texte s'est construit comme tous les textes depuis plus de 30 ans. Euh, C'est une création collective. Euh, on a une idée, un sujet, mais on n'a pas de texte. Le texte n'est pas un point de départ, c'est un point d'arrivée. Et ça prend une année où les acteurs, avec les auteurs, improvisent beaucoup. Et il y a des scènes qui ne sont pas improvisées, qui sont écrites pendant euh, le, les répétitions. Donc c'est le résultat d'une année de travail avec toutes les énergies de l'équipe. C'est un théâtre de réflexion et d'action. Ça ne peut pas être un théâtre rhétorique seulement, un théâtre didactique. Ça doit être un théâtre qui donne à réfléchir, mais qui donne de l'émotion et qui donne du plaisir. Euh, Amnésia, c'est le deuxième volet d'une trilogie euh, qui a commencé avant la Révolution. C'est euh, sur le pouvoir lui-même, 
sur la dictature, sur la famille euh, du tyran. C'est ça qui est euh, l'objet d'une espèce de radioscopie euh, pour entrer dans les détails du clan mafieux qui a régné pendant 23 ans en Tunisie. C'est un spectacle nettement contre Ben Ali et le spectacle a été censuré pendant deux mois en Tunisie. Il est prémonitoire parce qu'on a tellement rêvé de la chute de Ben Ali qu'elle a fini par arriver. Mais euh, la réalité a dépassé la fiction parce que notre euh, chute euh, du monarque est, est une révolution de palais. Ce sont ceux qui l'ont mis là, qui l'ont euh, démis euh, de, de ses fonctions et on voit les mécanismes du coup d'État. En Tunisie, euh, ce n'était pas un coup d'État, c'était une révolte qui est devenue une révolution populaire. Mais il y a beaucoup de points communs et prophétiques euh, entre notre spectacle et la réalité. C'est simple, nous, nous pratiquons un, un, un théâtre citoyen depuis 40 ans. Un théâtre qui témoigne, un théâtre qui critique, qui dénonce, un théâtre de la résistance, un théâtre qui s'occupe de l'homo tunisianus, de l'homme tunisien. Euh, et quand nous partons au Japon, en Argentine, aux États-Unis d'Amérique, eh bien, euh, euh, nous ressentons à quel point une histoire tunisienne peut toucher euh, euh, des spectateurs du monde entier. 19h58. 59h, rien. And if you consider that through art you propose to share and not to divide, because in the society, of course, we know, we all of us experience the idea of being together, not being enemies. Mm -hmm. But in arts, there is another dimension of this. I want your opinion on this. Can an artist feel himself this, this age of, of, uh, of these big changes that we, we are experiencing? Can an artist feel a kind of ambassador of, of the idea of uh, otherness, of togetherness, mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, mm. um, of being uh, precise to an idea of, of a new age, maybe. Well, in other words, you're asking, can artists be a historical agent? And the question is yes. Mm -hmm. But I think we also have to take into consideration the view that the artist oftentimes works from the point of establishing an imaginative distance, not necessarily a spatial or temporal distance, but the imaginative distance from the events of, of history. Mm -hmm. uh, can the artist be an ambassador in this sense? I don't know if the artist can be an ambassador in that classic sense, but I think at the same time we have to also delve into the position of the artist who wants to withdraw mm -hmm. from the world, who wants to create a boundary between the event and his own space of reflection. And I think we have to be able to accord the artist that space of reflection. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I think that the challenge for artists is also not to completely withdraw mm -hmm. from you know, the scene mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh, history making. Mm -hmm. you know, because we think, I do believe, that the artist can be a historical agent in, the, in, in this sense. If you remember in 1937, um, during the um, uh, World Fair in Paris, you had two of the great powers of the period, Germany and the Soviet Union, facing each other, uh, you know, uh, between their, um, you know, facing each other with their respective pavilions. And in the Spanish pavilion, who did you have? Pablo Picasso. And Pablo Picasso inaugurated in the Spanish pavilion the premier anti-war icon 
Guernica. Guernica was painted in this period of crisis. Mm -hmm. And more than 75 years later, this painting still remains a great work of art. Yes. So it is possible mm -hmm. for an artist to serve as a historical agent. But in order to do so, the artist has to bring the entire repertoire of his imaginative and reflective resources mm -hmm. to help us make sense of what is taking mm. place. That's a great example that you've given to us with Picasso. But do you believe that uh, we need a new way of political expression these days? That means that our artists also could follow this idea of new expression and may, may propose but through their work and through their position in the society uh, a way of behavior to the governments. Do you believe in this? Well, I think that you, we have to make a separation between the artist as citizen in yes. which he acts in the social sphere and the artist as a creative being mm -hmm. in which he serves his own you know, creative and inspiration. So these are two separate things. The, uh, the, the artist as citizen absolutely can use his or her moral authority to try to shape the debates that take place in the public sphere amongst equals in this sense, not as an exceptional character, but as someone who descends from the ivory tower, so to speak, or comes out from the garrets, as some would have it, you know, to participate in a collectivity. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to make the distinction between the artist as part of a collectivity, as part of a collective, so to mm -hmm. speak, mm -hmm. and the artist as an individual, as an individual whose subjective uh, position is not something that is necessarily negotiated in public in that way. So I think that these two roles uh, really bring into the question of the dialectical nature of the figure of the artist. Uh -huh. The artist as citizen, on the one hand, and the artist as an individual creative being. And I think these two things are not necessarily opposed, but they exist in two structures of production of subjectivity that are completely different. Yeah.